Hey guys, it's Joe with PocketNow.com, and another thing that I like about Android is the ability to load up custom keyboards or input methods. Today I want to show you Swift Key X Beta and what it can do, and some little caveats about it. Let's go take a look. Okay, so first and foremost, an input method is a fancy name for a keyboard. You Windows Mobile guys know that as a SIP or a soft input panel. And basically, whenever you go into a text editing box, it's that keyboard that shows up right across the bottom and it lets you, well, type in stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that we've shown you in the past. This is another one and it's kind of unique. So let's go through some of these settings first and then we'll get to the really unique part that sets it apart from all of the other input methods that we've looked at before. First of all, you've got your language profile and this is in the settings, which you can get to come back in here in the language and keyboard settings area. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into Swift Key Beta. Language profile, you can set your language. In this case, I've chosen English US. So this is kind of a, a nice choice for you if you've got a, uh, a device, for example, that is a European device and you don't have English US. You might have European US or um, UK US, or, excuse me, UK English. How about that? Uh, but you've got all kinds of different uh, English variations. Well, in this case, you can in fact download the US version of English, but there's also some of the other stuff in here as well that you can download too. So quite a bit of language that you can download. The download itself takes a bit of time, so I would recommend you do that over Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and take a look. Personalization, you can tailor predictions. This is really where the app gets interesting. Now, once uh, we're all familiar with dictionaries, right? You type in something on your keyboard, and if it doesn't recognize a word, like pocket now, you can add that to your dictionary, so when you type in pocket now, it will autocomplete that, or rather, it won't autocomplete it to something else. Does that make sense? So it won't try and uh, spell check something for you that's really not a problem in the first place. Well, this is rather interesting. You can see here it's got learn from Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, SMS, and then we can clear all data. Now, you actually have to provide... Uh, not necessarily credentials, but you have to log in and give this app uh, the ability to look at the stuff that you're posting in each one of these if you want to get these uh, personalization options. Now, you don't have to do it. It's entirely optional. If you don't do it, this is essentially a normal keyboard. However, if you do, and that's where this uh, really gets interesting, like I've mentioned before, the app will essentially use your post to Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, uh, and your text as a predictive measure. It will try and figure out what you're trying to say and autocomplete faster based on what you've typed in there. So if you come in here, you can go in and of course you need to log in using Facebook. Okay, So you do that and log in. Now this is not providing credentials to SwiftKey, rather what it's doing is it's logging into Facebook and you're getting back a token that gives SwiftKey X the ability to connect to Facebook. So if you ever want to go back and, uh, and undo that, it's relatively easy. And you see here that I did not complete that, so it gave me a message saying that it failed and that I should try again. Uh, I'm not going to do that because this is just kind of a demo for you. We don't want to take up that time. But what it'll do, it'll try and autocomplete based on your writing style on each one of these. And I find I have entirely different writing styles in each one so I might want to use my Gmail writing style and not my Facebook or Twitter or text because those are all kind of shorthand and abbreviated um, whereas my Gmail is more longhand it's more email so bear that in mind um, because it is token based you can revoke those tokens from any one of these apps and you don't have to worry about it but even still I'm a little bit worried keyboards in and of themselves have the ability to record and report every keystroke that you write. I mean, they're a keyboard, that's what they do. They have the ability to report that back to a third party. I haven't seen any that have actually done that, but the potential is there. Now having an app that goes out and connects to all of your social media and your Gmail, well, that's a little bit concerning to me, and it's one of those things where you go, eh, I don't know if I want to do this, but it's really an interesting and novel approach. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other settings. We can change the theme from a 
dark theme to a light theme. I like the dark one. It's kind of Windows Phone 7 ish. Layout, we can change it to QWERTY, AZERTY, uh, different languages. Um, and one thing that I don't see, even though we've got all this, is Dvorak. It shouldn't be that hard, guys, but anyway. Moving right along, we can also turn on arrow keys. If you don't have a little touchpad or a, a rollerball, it's nice when your keyboard has arrows to help do some fine positioning of your pointer. So I've got a touchpad, so we'll leave that turned off. Come down here in stats. My efficiency is only 55%. That's not all that great for a uh, keyboard that's supposed to be super efficient, but it's still a beta, so we'll forgive it a little bit. I also have 801 total keystrokes, which means that I've saved 1,010. Now, when you look at it in that perspective, 55%, that's not bad. It saved me that many keystrokes. So this isn't accuracy. This is efficiency. Let's go ahead and look at some other stuff. Advanced can do all kinds of stuff. Typing style, I've had this in rapid, so it's really fast for those of you who type and depend on autocorrection. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try precise for uh, a little bit and see if I like it any better. The spacebar will, what? Insert a space, complete the current word, always insert a prediction. You can set that. The default is to complete the current word, yada, yada, yada. Um, lots of stuff. Okay, we got all that. Uh, one thing that I just recently did is I disabled the autocomplete for the physical keyboard. So when I slide out my keyboard and start typing, just like that, I actually get SwiftKey X autocomplete suggestions on that keyboard as well. So the, uh, the experience is the same across both different keyboards, even though the keyboards are somewhat different. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and come back to home and let's take a look at how this works. So let's go ahead and make a new Google Doc and wait for that to load. We want to choose a document. We'll call it Untitled. Open this guy up. And because this is going out to the cloud and back, it is a little bit slower. Uh, it's needing me to uh, to log in apparently. Okay, did it automatically. Good. So I've got my untitled document down here. Let's go ahead and start typing something in. So I went ahead and hit the edit button and now I've got my first line of text. And you can see the keyboard down here. It's really kind of nice. It doesn't follow the theming. You can notice up here that I've got this uh, cyanogen blue theme and I've got these nice green buttons down here. So it doesn't really match that yet. Again, still a beta. But we can go in here and type in hello and you can see it didn't autocomplete that very well for me. Again, on camera, it's kind of hard because you're looking at this from a different angle. Hello, my name is Joe. Okay, just like that. And it replaced with Hal. So, kind of interesting how all that works. Um, same predictive type that you normally have. You've got the same keyboard that switches over to a numeric versus a um, versus an alpha keyboard. You can long press and get numbers and okay, just like that. All kinds of fun. When you flip the keyboard open, now let's do this first. When you're in landscape, the buttons are a little bit easier to push because they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit bigger rather. And when we open this up and start typing See if I can get my cursor back in there. I work for pocketnow.com. And I had that in my autocorrect, but I didn't choose it. Um, and you see it put a space in after my dot and capitalized the C, so I have to go back in and do that again. So this is kind of using the prediction, even though we told it not to. <laughs> on the physical keyboard, so a little bit interesting there. Anyway, the uh, the app is called Swift Key X. It is currently a beta. It is very fun, I've enjoyed using it. Let me get back here to my languages and keyboard, and you can see Swift Key X beta. If you would like to give this a try yourself, head on over to pocketnow.com and check out the link. We'll give you a link to where you can go out and grab uh, the APK to download. It's not yet available in the Android market, at least not at the time of this filming. Um, very cool. Tell your friends about it. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. 
if you haven't yet subscribed to our video channel, make sure you could do that so you can stay up to date on our uh, basically all of our smartphone news. So talking about smartphones, specifically Android and custom input methods for Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi.